It's not quite Wonderland, but Shana James's Spearwood studio is a place where strange things happen, where art is made using negative space and a giant rolling machine. I just thought I'd print this little one up for you, which is, it's Alice with a pair of rabbit ears on, and it's called Alice Trying to Fit In. How did you actually cut that out? It's actually like the old lino that used to be on the floor in the 50s and before. You know, what we call lino now is actually vinyl. In lots of ways, it's like making a stamp. You carve out all the white areas and you leave the black areas. So I'll get some ink out. And then I'll just spread it out on a piece of glass. And then I just roll it. It makes a great noise too, doesn't it? (laughs) When the lino cut is covered in ink, it's placed on a sheet of paper and sent through the press. And there's a little bit of embossing there. That's a good sign. That means the pressure's right. Just lift it up and there we go. Wow. What's the appeal of working in lino cut? It has a very tactile feel. It feels, it's a very physical process. The carving is very satisfying to start with. The image is very graphic. You get these very strong blacks and it's a way of kind of translating an image, just like translating a piece of text from one language to another. With Linocut, you're translating a drawing into the language of Linocut. And in that process of translation, some things are lost, but other things are gained. And so it's a very interesting way to make an image. What's gained? I think the graphic nature, the sharpness of it. Because you can't shade with Linocut, it's either black or it's white. I mean, you can do coloured ones as well. But if you want to create a graduation, you need to do that with texture or pattern as a way of creating that rather than with a pencil you can just shade darker or lighter. So I guess subtlety is a real challenge in lino cut. Yes it is and it is possible it's possible to get subtlety in a lino cut but it is a kind of gutsy medium as well. You've created a lino cut exhibition based on the story of Alice in Wonderland. Why Alice? When I was a young child, we had a record of Alice in Wonderland. At the time, I didn't realise it wasn't the original text. All the people spoke in American accents. It wasn't Disney, but also also it wasn't the original one either. But I loved it and and me and my sister listened to it over and over. And still to this day, we can recite great chunks out of it (laughs) if if the need calls for it. Oh my, there goes a white rabbit. I've never seen a white rabbit wearing a blue necktie and a brown jacket before. Oh, my ears and whiskers. Oh, my ears and whiskers. It's getting late. And I've certainly never seen a talking white rabbit who had a watch or a pocket to take it out of. Where in the world is he going in such a hurry? He seems to have popped down that rabbit hole and I will just have to follow. My daughter, when she was in primary school, won the Alice in Wonderland book and it was the original text and I read it to her and then I kind of uncovered a whole new layer of meaning because the text was so much better written than than what I had known as a child and it had lots of subtlety, lots of humour, lots of symbols and... I just enjoyed it so much. So at that time I started to kind of doodle in my sketchbook but then it wasn't till... I think it was when I went to Bali to um, run the lino cut workshop and I arrived in this kind of exotic garden um, in Ubud and the place that we were staying around the swimming pool had black and white slabs in a checkerboard pattern which to me was just Alice in Wonderland. So I started doing more drawings then and then it, it was almost like it chose me. Just more and more drawings started coming out of my sketchbook. So when I was offered this exhibition... I had already had sketchbooks full of ideas and I could just go to those and start making the liner cuts. This is all my ex- work for the exhibition. So this is all my stuff based on Alice in Wonderland. This one, she um, has got the rabbit trap. This one that went onto the invitation has got the rabbit trap as well. And when um, somebody I know was cleaning out their shed and they said, and there's a rabbit trap there, said... An actual rabbit trap <laughs> on your wall there. 
a very rusty one. And she said, oh, I'm cleaning out my shed and I've got all these things I don't know what to do with. I've got a rabbit trap and my face kind of lit up and I went, oh, can I have it? <laughs> There's no rabbit trap in the story, is There's there? There's no rabbit trap in the story. But in the story, I kind of, I've kind of taken the story to another place. So I kind of thought of the rabbit, originally I thought of the rabbit as the person who knows what to do because the rabbit really navigates Wonderland very well and she follows him to Wonderland and he always seems to know where he should be and he's very kind of official and reminded me of people that seem to have it together. You know, there's people that always seem to have it together. And then over time I went, no, the rabbit's kind of almost like Alice's inner knowing. You know, we all have that ability to navigate stuff well, but we don't always access it. And so then the idea is like, well, she wants the rabbit so badly and that kind of idea of desire when desire kind of gets out of control. So she she really desires the rabbit. And this one, she's just got the rabbit trap on the table. And then in the other one, you know, with a cup of tea as well. On the other one, she's got the rabbit. She's got the rabbit trap out. But, you know, unbeknownst to her, the rabbit's actually with her. And so she doesn't have to, she doesn't have to trap the rabbit. Alice in Wonderland has been a source of creative inspiration for so many artists. Why do you think that is? The story is rich with symbols and I think that especially figurative artists or narrative artists see those symbols in the story. The idea of, you know, jumping down the rabbit hole and you're in another world and it's a difficult world to navigate and in lots of ways it's really like our own world in that there are times that it's difficult to navigate our own world and I always thought that part of my attraction to it was the fact that I always felt like that this world was a bit crazy and that there were things about it that you would go, why does it have to be like that? You know, why do you have these rules? Why is it like that? And, And so I kind of felt like a lot of affinity for Alice in this kind of strange world. Now, you haven't just done this for Alice in Wonderland. You've responded to some other texts with art too. What is it about hearing a story that makes you want to go away and make art? When I get pictures in my head, to me it's such a gift and I put them in a sketchbook straight away. Oh, when was it? Maybe a couple of years ago. I went to a concert called Conversations with Ghosts, which was Paul Kelly and 10 classical musicians. And they had made works, some from... Paul Kelly lyrics, some were famous poetry. There was Sailing to Byzantium by W.B. Yeats and I made some work about that because that that poem is just full of imagery. I've made two pictures from that poem but I could easily make 20, you know. There are just, there are, every line is a picture waiting to happen. Is there something within you that you can't not respond by doodling a sketch or something when you hear something like that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's what I love to do more than anything else. And since I was a young child, it's what I've loved to do. So I don't know. I just, when I have, when I do have a, a response to a text, I really want to, in a way, I'm almost, I have the response to the text and then I make art from my response rather than directly from the text. So other people might look at it and they might have different pictures in their heads and so it's it's very personal but it's 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 kind of that thing of the personal and the universal hopefully my personal response touches other people and that's that's what I hope will happen <laughs> 